Greetings fellow makers! Welcome down to my shop. I'm Bill and today I'm going to show you how to paint a Destiny hand cannon. This is part two of a video series on building and painting a Destiny hand cannon. You can go watch part one, but this styrofoam gun wasn't made by me. No, this was made by our pal Andrew DFT over on his channel. So if you'd like to see how this guy was built, head on over to his video right there and check out the fabrication process. Of course, I also made a Destiny hand cannon. That was my video last week. This week, Andrew is painting my video. So, of course, you wanna go over there and check out that video too. And while you're over there, go ahead and subscribe to Andrew's channel. He's a great guy, an amazing fabricator, and he has tons of tutorial videos coming out all about building really cool props and costumes. All right, you now know everything you need to know, and I'm gonna show you how I painted this wonderful prop masterpiece. Andrew was clever enough to send the gun with some of the smaller, more delicate pieces in a separate box so that they wouldn't be broken off. The first thing I had to do was glue them in place. I used just a little bit of super glue and attached the trigger guard, trigger hammer, and under barrel attachment thing. I then drilled a hole in the end of the barrel and inserted a threaded rod to use as a handle during the painting process. The next thing I wanted to do was to seal and prime this gun. Most spray paints will actually eat through styrofoam, so I didn't want to take that chance. Instead, I went with Mod Podge. This can, of course, just be brushed on by hand, but I wanted to try and spray it using my critter gun. I thinned the Mod Podge with a little bit of water, and I also added some black acrylic paint. I had never used this on styrofoam before, so I did a quick spray test on a scrap piece just to make sure it would work out the way I wanted. Once I was happy with the process, I laid down three or four thin layers of this sealant on the foam gun and I let it dry. And when I say I let it dry, I mean I furiously dried it with a hairdryer because I'm impatient. Then using reference images of the Moss Scala hand cannon, I came up with a game plan for my layers of color. It looked like the chip metal paint on the cylinder was actually a little bit brighter than the rest of the gun, so I airbrushed a base coat of silver acrylic paint on that part. I also sprayed this silver onto the circular embellishments on the handle. The rest of the gun looked like it was a darker finish, so I covered it, again with my airbrush, using a gunmetal acrylic paint. I didn't bother masking the cylinder since most of this would be covered with the blue paint later on. I just tried to be careful with the airbrush and not get too much gunmetal on the silver area. Some of the parts of the gun needed to remain that dark gunmetal color, so I went and masked them off using masking tape. I used a delicate surfaces masking tape, in fact, to protect those areas from the blue paint I would be spraying on. This is easily the most tedious part of the job, but it makes the paint application much easier easier and look way more legit. With all of the tape and paper masking laid down, it was time to start thinking about paint chipping. Again, using that reference image, I mapped out the spots on the gun that had some significant paint chipping off of the blue areas. Then I used toothpaste. Yes, you heard me. I used toothpaste as a masking fluid to mask off the chipped paint areas. In the past, you've seen me use mustard on my Han Solo gun and liquid latex. So I figured I'd give you another option. The toothpaste can be applied with a small paintbrush and it smells fantastic. I tried my best to replicate the look from the in-game references with my toothpaste. Once I was happy with the paint chip masking placement, I mixed up my paint. I already had a sky blue paint, but it needed to be just a shade lighter, so I mixed in some white. Again, these are all acrylic model paints. These Tamiya paints can be thinned with a rubbing alcohol, so I did mix in a little bit of that rubbing alcohol to make sure it would flow nicely through my airbrush. All of that prep work really paid off. At this point, all I needed to do was to cover every exposed surface with a good couple of layers of that nice blue paint. It did take more than one layer to cover all of that dark metallic paint with the lighter blue paint, but it was well worth the time. When that paint had fully dried, all I had to do was peel away my masking tape and marvel at the fruits of my labor. There's nothing quite as satisfying as peeling off masking tape from a paint job. Except maybe for brushing off the paint chipping masking fluid. Using a wet brush, I carefully removed the toothpaste from all of the spots where it had been laid down. This picked up the blue paint from those areas, exposing a chipped metallic spot below. On a side note, this whitening toothpaste has 
hydrogen and peroxide in it and it looks like it removed a bit of the metallic pigment. It still looks okay, but maybe don't go with Arm & Hammer next time. Once the chipping was done, I masked off the strip on the back of the cylinder. The strip was simply painted white with the airbrush piece of cake. Next, I went and painted the handle. Again, a bit more masking with the old masking tape. For the circular bits, I used a circle template to cut out a little piece of masking tape to protect it. The rest of the handle was masked with just more strips of masking tape. After that, a couple good layers of black paint were laid down to finish off the look of the handle. Removing the masking tape at this point revealed a nearly finished paint job. Before finishing up the weathering, I wanted to protect all of the paint I had already applied, so I went with a matte spray varnish. I really like varnish because it dries quickly and like I said before, I'm impatient. I sprayed on a couple of good layers and then let it dry. I started the weathering by painting the insides of the barrel black. This would hide the handle hole that I had drilled earlier and any remaining wood color. The rest of the weathering was done with watered down acrylic paints. The first pass was a burnt sienna, kind of a rusty looking wash. I used a crummy old chip brush to sort of haphazardly apply it to the nooks and crannies of the gun, and then the excess paint was wiped away with a wet paper towel. This was repeated all over the gun until I was happy with the level of rust. Then I did the same thing with a dirty black and brown wash. I found that this paint really liked to stick to the flat blue areas, so I had to go back over it again with a cleaner wet paper towel. This did a good job of cleaning off those areas of any remaining stubborn acrylic paint. Again, this darker layer was applied and repeated over the entire gun until I found it was just grimy enough. Then I did just a tiny bit of touch up work with a smaller brush, called the whole thing good. Andrew's gun was all done and I couldn't be happier. Tell you what gang, this was a really, really fun project to paint. I'm especially happy with how well the paint chipping sort of matches with the reference image. And it was really fun to paint up one of my buddy's projects. I hope you guys really liked this collaboration video. I know I had a lot of fun. And again, like I said, if you wanna see how the gun I made last week got painted, well, you're gonna to have to go over to Andrew's channel and check out what he did with it. Of course, we'll have links to all of that down in the description below, along with all of the paints and materials that I used to paint this guy. Also remember the gun I made last week? Well, there's some free blueprints for that. If you'd like to try that build yourself, again, linked below. Thanks for joining us today, especially if you're heading on over here from Andrew's channel. Hopefully you guys stick around. We have a whole bunch more prop and costume making content coming in the weeks and days following, and you don't wanna miss any of those. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you all in the next build. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our new weekly prop and costume tutorial videos. For more goodies, head over to our website where you'll find blueprints, tutorial books, articles, and more. We also have a second channel for our Q&A show and extra behind the scenes videos. Thanks again and happy crafting.